In this video, we will show you how to scan and the sonoanatomy required to perform a popliteal sciatic nerve block. This is an excellent block for foot and ankle surgery, either as analgesia, in addition to a general anaesthetic, or as a sole mode of anaesthesia. It does, however, not cover the area innervated by the saphenous nerve, the terminal branch of the femoral nerve, which is highlighted in pink. In order to scan for the popliteal sciatic nerve block, the patient can be supine, prone or lateral. You can see here the patient is positioned in the lateral position with a pillow between their knees for patient comfort. A high frequency linear probe is placed in the area behind the popliteal fossa. If you look at the image here, superficially at the top of the screen, you will see skin and subcutaneous tissue. To the left hand side, or the lateral part of the patient image, you will see the muscle bulk made up of biceps femoris. To the right hand side, you will see the muscle bulk made up of the semitendinosus and semimembranosus muscles. In the centre of the screen, you will see the classical honeycomb internal architecture appearance of the sciatic nerve. It is viewed here as two separate components, the common fibular nerve laterally and the tibial nerve medially. This neural bundle sits above the popliteal vein and then the popliteal artery. On this diagram here you can see that the tibial nerve and common fibular nerve, although closely applied to each other here, are separate entities. They are however contained within a common paraneural sheath and our understanding of anatomy nowadays suggests that the optimum block is one where local anaesthetic is administered underneath the paraneural sheath but outside the epineurums of both the tibial and common fibular nerves. Below the tibial nerve here you can see the popliteal vein and the popliteal artery. With gentle probe pressure the popliteal vein is compressed while the popliteal artery remains patent and pulsatile. By applying the colour Doppler and squeezing the calf, the venous return through the popliteal vein is seen to increase with the blue flow demonstrated thus. The popliteal artery is seen here in red, pulsatile and non-compressible. As the probe is slid in a caudal direction, you can see the central nerve bundle is separating into the common fibula or common perineal nerve on the left hand side of the screen and the tibial nerve on the right hand side of the screen. This is the seesaw sign. Plantar flexing the ankle elevates the common fibular nerve whilst dorsiflexing the ankle elevates the tibial nerve. This can be used to identify difficult to spot neural structures. The ideal insertion point for the block is the point where the common fibula and tibial nerves are seen as just separate. Care should be taken with in-plane needling to avoid the popliteal vein which lies below the neural structures. In an ideal situation, injection below the paraneural sheath would cause local anaesthetic to spread within the paraneural sheath, identifying the two components of the sciatic nerve as separate entities. In this video, you can see the needle being inserted in plane from the lateral aspect of the thigh. It approaches the common fibula and tibial nerve and injects local anaesthetic below the paraneural sheath. The local anaesthetic distension allows you to clearly visualise the two structures of the sciatic nerve. We hope you have found our video useful. Some common tips or pearls. Always ensure the patient is positioned comfortably. Ensure ideal ergonomics between yourself and the ultrasound screen to avoid turning or rotating the trunk in order to visualise the screen. Have the ultrasound probe with a slight plant angulation to account for anisotropy and optimally visualise the neural structures which are often not lying at 90 degrees to the skin. If required, 
use the calf squeeze technique to visualize the vascular structures below the nerve and use the toe wiggle or the seesaw sign to identify the neural structures. We recommend in-play needling to ensure optimal needle tip visualization throughout the procedure and always administer the, the local anesthetic in small incremental injections.